Imagine, in a world swirling with the chaos of war and societal upheaval, the birth of a legend. On January 17, 1942, amidst global turmoil, a future icon took his first breath. I told you all that I was the greatest of all time. Cassius Marcellus Clay Jr., later known as Muhammad Ali, began a journey from the segregated streets of Louisville, Kentucky, to become the greatest boxer in history. But how did this journey unfold? Let's delve into the early years and rise to fame of a man who would redefine sports and activism. Early years and rise to fame. Cassius Marcellus Clay Jr., who would later be known worldwide as Muhammad Ali, was born on January 17, 1942 in Louisville, Kentucky. His arrival into the world coincided with a period of intense global conflict and domestic racial tensions. Yet, it was in this environment that Clay's unbreakable spirit and remarkable talent first emerged. Ali's childhood was set against the backdrop of segregation in the United States. He grew up in a black middle-class neighborhood where the realities of racial division were a part of everyday life. His father, Cassius Marcellus Clay Sr., was a painter of signs and billboards, known for his jovial personality when sober, but turning aggressive with alcohol. His mother, Odessa Grady Clay, was a hardworking woman who sometimes took up domestic work to support her family. Young Clay was introduced to boxing quite by chance. At the age of 12, his beloved red and white Schwinn bicycle was stolen, and a furious Clay vowed to whoop the thief. This declaration caught the attention of Joe Martin, a police officer and boxing coach. Martin suggested that Clay should learn how to box before seeking revenge. This chance meeting ignited Clay's passion for boxing, a sport that would soon become his life's work. Under Martin's tutelage, Clay quickly developed his skills and became a formidable young boxer. His dedication was unmatched. He would often get up at dawn to run, racing against the bus to increase his speed and endurance. His prowess in the ring grew rapidly, and he soon began accumulating victories and titles. At the age of 14, Clay won his first Golden Gloves championship for novices in the light heavyweight class. His boxing style was unique for a heavyweight. He was incredibly fast and used a combination of footwork and quick jabs to outmaneuver his opponents. His charismatic personality also began to shine through, both in and out of the ring. Clay was not just a fighter, he was a showman, known for his poetic taunts and predictions about his fights, a trait that would later become one of his trademarks. Clay's amateur career peaked with his performance at the 1960 Summer Olympics in Rome. Despite his fear of flying, he traveled to Italy and won the light heavyweight gold medal. His Olympic triumph was a defining moment bringing him not only a gold medal, but also national attention. This victory was more than just a sporting achievement. It was a beacon of hope and inspiration for many African Americans struggling against the injustices of racial segregation. Returning home as an Olympic champion, Clay was still subjected to the harsh realities of racial discrimination. Famously, he threw his gold medal into the Ohio River after being refused service at a whites-only restaurant a poignant reminder that his achievements did not shield him from the prejudices of the time. Champion of the world, triumphs and controversies. Muhammad Ali's ascent from a promising young boxer to a world champion was as swift as it was dramatic. His journey not only redefined the sport of boxing, but also challenged the societal norms of the time, weaving his story into the larger tapestry of 20th century history. After his Olympic triumph, Ali's professional career took off at an extraordinary pace. He quickly became known for his unique style in the ring, marked by his incredible speed, agility, and his famous float-like-a-butterfly, sting-like-a-bee approach. His ability to dance around opponents while delivering rapid, precise punches set him apart in a division traditionally dominated by slower, more powerful fighters. Ali's first major test came in 1964, against the reigning heavyweight champion, Sonny Liston. Liston was a formidable opponent, known for his punching power and intimidating presence. However, Ali, undeterred by Liston's reputation, employed his now famous psychological tactics, publicly taunting Liston and predicting a victory. In a stunning upset, Ali defeated Liston, and at the age of 22, 
became the youngest boxer to take the title from a reigning heavyweight champion. This victory was more than a sporting achievement. It marked the emergence of Ali as a significant figure in the civil rights movement. Shortly after defeating Liston, Ali announced his conversion to Islam and his affiliation with the Nation of Islam, a decision that was met with controversy and backlash. He changed his name from Cassius Clay, which he called his slave name, to Muhammad Ali, a name given to him by his spiritual mentor, Elijah Muhammad. Ali's conversion and name change were significant at a time when racial tensions in the United States were high. His alignment with the Nation of Islam, known for its advocacy of black empowerment and its resistance to white supremacy, placed Ali at the center of social and political debates. His stance was bold and unapologetic, resonating with many African Americans who saw him as a symbol of resistance and pride. However, Ali's most controversial moment came in 1967, when he refused induction into the U.S. Army during the Vietnam War, citing religious beliefs and opposition to the war. His famous statement, I ain't got no quarrel with them Viet Cong, became a rallying cry for the anti-war movement and further amplified his role as a social activist. As a result of his refusal, Ali was arrested, found guilty of draft evasion charges, and stripped of his boxing titles. He faced a five-year prison sentence, though he remained free while the conviction was appealed. During this time, Ali's boxing license was suspended and he did not fight for nearly four years at the peak of his career. This period was a significant setback for Ali, both financially and in terms of his boxing legacy. However, it also cemented his status as a symbol of protest against the Vietnam War and racial injustice. Ali's conviction was eventually overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court in 1971, and he returned to the ring. His comeback was marked by two of the most famous bouts in boxing history, the fight of the century against Joe Frazier in 1971 and the rumble in the jungle against George Foreman in 1974. Ali lost to Frazier in their first meeting but reclaimed his title by defeating Foreman in a fight that stunned the world. The rumble in the jungle in Zaire was particularly significant. Ali employed a risky strategy called the rope-a-dope, allowing Foreman to tire himself out before Ali made his move, ultimately winning by knockout in the eighth round. This victory was a testament to Ali's enduring skill, intelligence, and resilience as a boxer. The fighter outside the ring, political stances and convictions. While Muhammad Ali's prowess in the boxing ring is legendary, his impact outside of it is equally significant. Ali's political stances and convictions, particularly during the turbulent 1960s and 70s in America, positioned him as a prominent and sometimes contentious figure in the civil rights and anti-war movements. Ali's conversion to Islam in 1964 and his name change were the first of many actions that signaled his commitment to racial and religious issues. Aligning with the Nation of Islam, an organization that promoted black empowerment and self-sufficiency, Ali became an outspoken advocate for African-American rights. His affiliation with figures like Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad further heightened his profile as a social activist. Ali's conversion was more than a personal religious choice. It was a political statement, a rejection of the systemic racism prevalent in American society. Ali's opposition to the Vietnam War was his most prominent and controversial stance. In 1966, as the war escalated, Ali declared himself a conscientious objector, stating that his religious beliefs prohibited him from fighting. His famous quote, I ain't got no quarrel with them Viet Cong, resonated with the growing anti-war sentiment in the United States. In 1967, Ali refused induction into the U.S. Army, leading to his arrest and conviction for draft evasion, a decision that led to a three-and-a-half-year ban from boxing and stripped him of his titles. During his exile from boxing, Ali spoke at colleges and public forums, voicing his opinions on racial injustice, war, and religious freedom. His stance cost him greatly, both professionally and financially, but it also made him a symbol of resistance and integrity. Ali's actions inspired many, particularly in the African-American community and among opponents of the Vietnam War. He showed that athletes could be more than entertainers, they could also be influential social and political voices. Ali's conviction was eventually overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court in 1971, marking a significant legal and moral victory. 
His return to boxing was triumphant, but the years lost to the legal battle and his stand against the war had taken a toll on his career. Nevertheless, Ali's actions during this period solidified his role as a champion of the oppressed and a voice for the voiceless. Ali's political activism extended beyond the United States. He was a global ambassador for peace and human rights, traveling to various countries and meeting with leaders to promote understanding and cultural exchange. His visits to countries like Iraq and North Korea, often in efforts to secure the release of American hostages, were testaments to his commitment to humanitarian causes. In his later years, despite battling Parkinson's disease, Ali remained committed to social and political causes. He was an advocate for Parkinson's research and dedicated himself to charitable work. His presence at the 1996 Atlanta Olympic Games, where he lit the cauldron during the opening ceremony, was a powerful symbol of perseverance and unity. Ali's humanitarian efforts were recognized in 2005 when he received the Presidential Medal of Freedom the highest civilian award in the United States. Return to the Ring, Comebacks and Challenges Muhammad Ali's return to the boxing ring in 1970 marked the beginning of a new chapter in his storied career, one filled with remarkable comebacks and formidable challenges. This period not only showcased Ali's resilience and fighting spirit, but also solidified his status as one of the greatest boxers of all time. Ali's comeback was initiated against Jerry Quarry in October 1970. After a three-and-a-half-year absence, there were questions about his form and fitness. However, Ali silenced doubters by winning the fight convincingly, demonstrating that he still possessed the speed, skill, and charisma that had made him a champion. This victory was more than just a successful return. It was a symbolic triumph over the obstacles he had faced outside the ring. In March 1971, Ali faced Joe Frazier in what was billed as the fight of the century. Both undefeated, both claiming the heavyweight title, the match was set to be one of the greatest in boxing history. Held at Madison Square Garden, the fight lived up to its billing. Frazier and Ali battled ferociously for 15 rounds, with Frazier ultimately emerging victorious, handing Ali his first professional defeat. The fight was a physical and emotional battle reflecting the intense rivalry between the two fighters. Ali's resilience in the face of this defeat was remarkable. He bounced back with a series of wins against top contenders, setting the stage for a rematch with Frazier in 1974. This time, Ali emerged victorious in a unanimous decision, setting up one of the most famous bouts in boxing history, the Rumble in the Jungle against George Foreman. In October 1974 in Kinshasa, Zaire, Ali faced the seemingly invincible George Foreman. Foreman was a fearsome puncher who had demolished Frazier and was favored to defeat Ali. However, Ali employed a strategy dubbed Rope-A-Dope, leaning against the ropes and allowing Foreman to tire himself out with futile punches. In the eighth round, a fatigued Foreman fell to Ali's sharp counterattacks, and Ali reclaimed the heavyweight championship in a stunning upset. This victory was a testament to Ali's strategic genius and physical endurance. Ali's later fights, including his third match with Frazier in the Thrilla in Manila in 1975, were marked by his determination and ability to overcome adversity. The Thrilla in Manila was a brutal contest, with both fighters enduring severe punishment. Ali emerged as the winner after Frazier's corner stopped the fight after the 14th round, the match is often regarded as one of the greatest in boxing history and a showcase of Ali's indomitable will. However, these later fights took a toll on Ali's health. His style, once defined by speed and agility, had become more stationary, relying on endurance and absorbing punishment. This change was attributed partly to his age and the effects of his long career. Despite this, Ali continued to fight, defending his title several more times. In 1978, Ali faced Leon Spinks, an Olympic gold medalist with only seven professional fights. In a surprising upset, Spinks defeated Ali, but Ali reclaimed the title later that year, becoming the first three-time heavyweight champion. This victory was a remarkable achievement, but it was clear that Ali's prime years were behind him. Ali's final fights were against Larry Holmes in 1980 and Trevor Burbick in 1981. Against Holmes, 
a former sparring partner, Ali suffered a punishing defeat. His fight against Burbick, which he lost by decision, was his last. After this fight, Ali retired from boxing, ending a career that spanned two decades. Legacy and Influence Beyond Boxing Muhammad Ali's legacy extends far beyond the boxing ring. His influence on sports, culture, politics, and social justice has left an indelible mark on the world, making him an enduring icon of the 20th century. Ali's boxing achievements are legendary, but his impact was amplified by his charismatic personality, eloquence, and unwavering principles. He was more than a sportsman. He was a cultural figure who used his platform to challenge societal norms and advocate for change. Ali's stance against the Vietnam War and his advocacy for civil rights were emblematic of his willingness to fight for his beliefs, regardless of personal cost. This courage made him a hero to many and a symbol of resistance against injustice. Ali's influence on other athletes cannot be overstated. He broke the mold of what a sports personality could be, not just an entertainer, but a vocal and influential figure in social and political matters. His example inspired generations of athletes to use their fame to speak out on issues close to their hearts. From the black-gloved fists of Tommy Smith and John Carlos at the 1968 Olympics to the more recent activism of figures like Colin Kaepernick, Ali's legacy of athlete activism is clear. Beyond his political impact, Ali's cultural influence was profound. His quick wit, poetic trash talk, and flamboyant style made him a media sensation. He was one of the first athletes to understand the power of television and media, using it to build his brand and spread his message. Ali's influence extended into music, literature, and film, where he was often referenced as a symbol of strength and defiance. His life story inspired books, documentaries, and movies, including the biopic Ali, in which Will Smith portrayed him. Ali's humanitarian efforts were also significant. Despite battling Parkinson's disease for over three decades, he dedicated himself to philanthropy. He supported numerous charitable organizations, including the Muhammad Ali Parkinson Center. His work with the Make-A-Wish Foundation and his efforts as a United Nations Messenger of Peace in promoting understanding and respect among different cultures showcased his commitment to humanitarian causes. His legacy in philanthropy is a testament to his compassionate nature and desire to make a positive impact on the world. Ali's role as a global ambassador for peace and reconciliation was particularly notable. He traveled to various countries, often on goodwill missions, to promote understanding and peace. His visit to Iraq in 1990 to negotiate the release of American hostages and his efforts in North Korea are examples of his commitment to global humanitarian efforts. Ali's influence also extended to the realm of religion and spirituality. His conversion to Islam and his advocacy for religious tolerance played a significant role in increasing awareness and understanding of the Muslim faith in America. He became a symbol of the diversity of the American religious landscape and contributed to the dialogue on interfaith understanding and respect. In the world of boxing, Ali's legacy is unmatched. He transformed the sport with his unique fighting style, charismatic personality, and pre-fight psychological tactics. He was instrumental in popularizing boxing globally, elevating it to unprecedented levels of popularity and respect. His fights were not just sporting events. They were cultural phenomena that captivated the world's attention. The Final Bell, Muhammad Ali's Last Days The twilight years of Muhammad Ali's life were marked by both reverence and reflection, as the world gradually prepared to bid farewell to one of its greatest sporting icons and humanitarians. Despite the physical challenges he faced, Ali's spirit remained unbroken, epitomizing the resilience and courage that defined his life. Ali's battle with Parkinson's disease, diagnosed in 1984, three years after his retirement from boxing, was perhaps his toughest opponent. The disease, likely exacerbated by years of repeated blows in the ring, gradually impaired his motor skills and speech. Yet Ali faced Parkinson's with the same fighting spirit he had shown in the ring and in his activism. He became an advocate for Parkinson's research and worked to raise awareness about the disease, showing the world that his illness did not define his spirit or his capacity to make a difference. Even as his health declined, 
Ali continued to participate in public life. One of the most poignant moments came during the 1996 Atlanta Olympics, when he lit the Olympic cauldron. Shaking but determined, Ali's appearance was a powerful symbol of perseverance and strength. It was a moment that moved millions around the world and underscored his status as a global icon. Ali's final years were also a time of widespread recognition and accolades. He received numerous awards that celebrated his contributions both inside and outside the boxing ring. In 2005, he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian honor in the United States, by President George W. Bush. This recognition was a testament to his impact as an athlete, a humanitarian, and an activist. Despite his illness, Ali remained committed to his humanitarian work. He continued to support various charitable causes and made public appearances to help raise funds and awareness for different organizations. His commitment to helping others, particularly those suffering from illnesses and poverty, remained unwavering. Ali's influence on sports, civil rights, and global humanitarian efforts continued to be felt in his final days. He was not just celebrated as a former heavyweight champion, but as a man who had used his fame to fight for justice, tolerance, and peace, his legacy was reflected in the countless lives he touched and the people he inspired. As his health deteriorated, Ali was surrounded by his loving family. His fourth wife, Lonnie, whom he married in 1986, was a constant presence and caregiver. His children, some of whom followed in his footsteps in sports and public life, were also a source of comfort and support. Ali's death on June 3, 2016, at the age of 74, was met with global mourning. Tributes poured in from around the world, from fans, celebrities, athletes, and world leaders. They spoke not only of his prowess in the boxing ring, but of his courage, humanity, and the indelible mark he left on the world. His passing was seen not just as the loss of a great athlete, but as the end of an era. Ali's funeral in his hometown of Louisville, Kentucky, was a fitting tribute to his life. It was a multi-faith service that reflected his own beliefs in peace and inclusivity. Thousands lined the streets to pay their respects, and notable figures from various sectors spoke of his impact on their lives and the world. The service was broadcast globally, allowing millions to participate in the farewell to a man who had become a global symbol of resilience and hope. Ali, the cultural phenomenon. Muhammad Ali was not just a boxer, he was a cultural phenomenon. His impact transcended the confines of the ring, influencing fashion, language, music, and even the civil rights movement. Ali's persona was a unique blend of athletic brilliance, verbal wit, and social consciousness, which made him an icon far beyond the world of sports. From the moment he burst onto the public scene, Ali was different. His poetic self-promotion and pre-fight predictions were revolutionary in a sport known for its stoicism and ruggedness. He brought a level of showmanship to boxing that had never been seen before, captivating audiences with his rhymes and predictions. Phrases like, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, became part of popular lexicon, illustrating his influence on language and culture. Ali's fashion sense was as bold and unapologetic as his boxing style and public persona. He often appeared in flamboyant, custom-made suits, bright colors, and sunglasses, challenging the traditional image of a boxer. His style was a reflection of his personality, confident, defiant, and unorthodox. Ali's influence on fashion extended to his boxing gear. The short white trunks he preferred became iconic in the sport. Music was another realm where Ali's influence was felt. He inspired numerous musicians and artists who saw in him a figure of defiance, resilience, and unyielding pride. Songs were written about him, and he even released an album of his spoken poetry, showcasing his unique blend of entertainment and activism. His association with major musical figures of the time, like Sam Cooke, further cemented his status as a cultural icon. Ali's role in the civil rights movement was significant. He was a contemporary of figures like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. and became an important voice in the struggle for racial equality. His refusal to be drafted into the Vietnam War was a stance that resonated with the anti-war movement and gave him a status akin to a civil rights leader. Ali's conversion to Islam and his name change were bold statements about his identity and beliefs, challenging the racial and religious status quo in America. 
The media played a crucial role in shaping Ali's cultural impact. His relationship with journalists and broadcasters was complex. He was at once charming and confrontational. His interviews were must-watch events, filled with humor, insight, and sometimes controversy. Ali understood the power of television and media in shaping public opinion and used it to his advantage, bringing attention to issues he cared about. Ali's global appeal also made him a cultural ambassador. He was known and loved around the world, not just as a boxer but as a symbol of resistance against oppression. His fights were global events, and his travels often had diplomatic undertones, like his efforts to secure the release of hostages in Iraq or his visit to North Korea. Ali's ability to connect with people across cultural and national boundaries was unprecedented for an athlete of his time. In film and literature, Ali's life story has been a subject of fascination. His life and career have been the focus of numerous documentaries and biographies, exploring the complexities of his character and his impact on society. The film Ali, starring Will Smith, brought his story to a new generation, showcasing his life's triumphs and struggles.